And that is exactly the kind of bomb that terrorists would like to make because they have easy access to lots of high explosive, very, very difficult access to fissile material. So exactly the goal of the Orion physicists, unfortunately, is also the goal of someone, you know, trying to illicitly make a nuclear weapon. So that's, that's why that's a secret. So the Orion paradox lives on. On the one hand, nuclear destruction. On the other, nuclear salvation. Some believe that Iran might be the only way to save the world. It may be the best technology to intercept and deflect an Earth-bound asteroid. Some near-Earth object is, is coming, and we know it's coming, and we have nine months or whatever, and we need to divert it. And Orion is one of the few existing ways we could do that. We're at risk of the whole planet could be wiped out, and it's, it's a mistake to... Uh, not look at that seriously. Orion provides such an advantage in speed over chemical propellants uh, that it seems that uh, that interception could take place in a much shorter time scale and consequently the deflection could take place on a, a, a further away so there, it was easier to make such an object uh, miss the earth. Now I, 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 I want to point out that, that um, uh, you know when I say technical things they're correct. Generally People w recoil from the notion of using nuclear explosives. I do. I recoil from that notion because I know we don't have that kind of world. And I know that having nuclear explosives in space is inviting someone to misuse them. Even now, the only way we could get large payloads around the solar system is by something like Orion because atomic bombs contain thousands of times more energy, indeed almost millions of times more energy, than any of the chemicals that we use in our existing rockets, you know, like hydrogen and oxygen. They're feeble compared with the energies of an atomic bomb. So when you talk of sending hundreds of tons or even thousands of tons of payload, including human beings, from to Mars, say, that's the only way we could do it, even now. The space age hasn't begun yet. I believe the time will come when very few members of the human race will be able to point to the part of the sky where the Earth is. I'm still very strongly interested in spreading life outside the Earth. Humans, of course, should go along, but the most, I mean, the most important thing to me is just enlarging the, the domain of life. And, Life has this marvelous adaptability. It's able to adapt itself to almost anything. And so it's hardly begun yet, adapting itself to the universe. This little planet doesn't give it so much scope. After Orion, Freeman Dyson went back to Princeton, physics and mathematics. But his dreams of space travel found a distant echo in his son's adventures in the Canadian Northwest. Certainly, the building these kayaks and doing these voyages, that was my way of, of doing what my father had tried to do but had, had failed at. It wasn't his failure, it was a failure, I think, on the part of the imagination of the government. Orion did not get the support and go ahead. So I went out on my own, built these kayaks, and did go to these far-off islands that were really like the planets of Jupiter. You can settle on them and refuel. My boats had these semicircular sails, you know, just, just like pusher plates. And you sort of coast, which is really what Orion was doing, was sort of surfing on these waves of plasma. In 1965, Freeman Dyson published an impassioned article in the journal Science entitled Death of a Project. The story of Orion, he wrote, is significant because this is the first time in modern history that a major expansion of human technology has been suppressed for political reasons. 
but those who've worked on Project Orion must continue to hope that they may see their work bear fruit in their own lifetimes. They cannot lose sight of the dream which fired their imaginations in 1958 and sustained them through the years of struggle afterward. The dream that the bombs which killed and maimed at Nagasaki and Hiroshima may one day open the skies to mankind. <laughs>